So today's the day, it's the trade deadline, and our first trade is gonna be an offer from the Atlanta Braves, Mike Soroka, and Jeffrey Ramos for Juan Soto. Cause I mean, of course, I, I would do that, right? Uh, of course, yeah, offer me that. Why, like, why is that even being recommended to me? Anyways, yeah, we're getting to the trade deadline in today's episode. We'll look at the all-star break ever so slightly. And the Mariners are actually offering us a really good deal. Like, unlike the Soroka for Soto deal, this makes a lot of sense for us. For the Mariners, I don't get it, but they really want Gerardo Parra. They want to bring Baby Shark to Seattle. And for Andres Munoz, our leaf pitcher is only 23 years old. I get he's making a million dollars a year, but that guy throws like 102, I think. I mean, he's really good. We have him on the Padres franchise. I'm cool with having Andres Munoz and trading him for Gerardo Parra, a guy we were going to trade at the deadline anyway ways makes a lot of sense our only all-star is Kyle Finnegan yeah our closing pitcher who's got deep potential but he's in the all-star game he is the closer for the National League he got the most votes out of any relief pitcher because he only gave up three runs in the entire first half of the year I mean when we checked on him during the Philly series he only gave up one run at that point he's given up two since but here he is he's coming out for the save here in the all-star game and folks if you haven't yet make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for some more LB22 to the show here on the channel also we posted road to the show earlier today so make sure to check that out we're starting a road to the show series I haven't played another show all that much, and we're doing it now on the channel. So Finnegan strikes out Joey Gallo to start his day off, and now Tucker Barnhart's going to come up. He'll ground out in the slider. Jonathan India throws it on over to Freddie Freeman. And now Kyle Finnegan is one out away of getting the save in the All-Star game. Ty France hits one in the air. Deep left field, not really deep. Kyle Schwarber is there. And Kyle Finnegan just came into the All-Star game, threw it to three batters, and got the damn save. He's 29 years old. He's got deep potential. And all of a sudden, he's an all-star, maybe one of the best closers in the league. I, what, did I think that was going to happen? No, he's still got deep potential, but my goodness. So we're coming up right now on the trade deadline. Let's see how our team plays before that inevitable day on July 31st. And all of a sudden, we just can't win ball games. Oh, my goodness. We lost like seven straight. We're 42 and 64, 18 games back of the Phillies in first place. We're on a six game losing streak. Okay, it's officially time to blow up this team and look to the future. So first trade, Joe Ross being involved in a trade for the third base prospect. I believe he played at Vanderbilt. Austin Martin, he's on the Minnesota Twins. We're going to trade Joe Ross, Sean Doolittle, and Wilson Ramos for Martin. In real life, would the Twins do this? Probably not, but they're the Twins. Who knows? Austin Martin can play third. He can play short. He can play all three outfield positions. Really like this trade. I, I really do. Martin's going to be a guy who could probably be in the pros in maybe next season. Honestly, he could be in the bigs. We'll see what happens. Again, building toward the, towards the future. He's not in the majors, of course, with the Twins. We're going to do this trade three for one. Does it make all the most sense realism-wise? Maybe not, but we'll Welcome to the team, Austin Martin. That's our first trade. Our second trade, Eric Fetty. Gotta get up out of here. I mean, there's just no future for this guy. He's not pitching well. He's got an ERA of six right now. Same with Joe Ross. I could trade him for Kavan Biggio, but instead, I'm gonna trade him for Vidal Brujan. I like Brujan more. He's a 66 overall, second base prospect. He's still got eight potential. He's a switch hitter. I think he's got more upside in this game than Biggio's got. So Fetty for Brujan works. Next up, Carl Edwards Jr., He's just a guy, you know, he's on an expiring deal. We only signed him for one year. I think we should move him, obviously. The Pirates aren't a team trying to win, but for Michael Burrows, a 57 overall, a B potential guy, I'll take that one for Carl Edwards Jr. Next up, Will Harris. He's 37 years old. We're going to try to move him off the squad. Big contract, but again, it's a one-year deal. It's expiring after this season. I think the trade here is Isan Diaz. Diaz has kind of been a Nats killer. Him and Miguel Rojas when they play Washington. I'm fine trading within the division here, considering we're not trying to win, and Will Harris probably won't be in Miami for all too long, but the Marlins are still trying to make a wild card push and win the division, so that's going to be the trade there. Next up, Cesar Hernandez. I wanted to keep him, but when I got this offer for Alex Reyes, I couldn't pass up on it. Hernandez for Reyes and Cabrera. I'll take that. We get a lefty in our pen now with Cabrera, and then Alex Reyes is pretty solid, too. I mean, he was a former top prospect in the league. I'm going to take this every day of the week. I really think it works. I know Hernandez is playing some good baseball right now, but I think for us, that makes the most sense considering now we have Vidal Brujan in our minor league system as well. Of course, Luis Garcia can play second as well. I'll say he's Escobar. I'm surprised we're even getting offers for him. I mean, Christopher Cespedes from the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles are not trying to win, but it's a meaningless trade between two teams that play for the Mid-Atlantic Sports Network. So we'll do that. Next up, Victor Robles. See you later. I think Lane Thomas is like low-key better than Robles. So Victor Robles over to the Cleveland Guardians for Fran Mil Reyes. This is going to make sense in a second because Fran Ram really doesn't play the field, but I mean, technically he can if you need him to. The 99 power is what we're here for with Fran Mil Reyes. He's got so much pop. He's a younger version of Nelson Cruz, I think. 
and Nelson Cruz is about to get traded for Deshaun Knowles. We're sending Cruz over to the Angels. The Angels need power bats, and this trade really works for them, obviously, adding Cruz to a squad with Shohei, Rendon, and Trout makes a lot of sense, so we're going to pick up Deshaun Knowles from, um, I believe, the Trash Pandas. With the Los Angeles Angels, we have to sign Chris Archer now since we traded Fetty and Joe Ross for a good reason, but we're going to be starting Mason Thompson now some games. We'll be starting Chris Archer. It's a very temporary um, pitching staff for now. I mean, this is the lineup. We'll change it in a second. I'll go over it more in just a little bit. But the pitching staff for now, again, the only guys I can see there being long term is Steven Strasburg and Josiah Gray. Corbin's, you know, we're just trying to get him off that contract basically we're just waiting and also Kiber Ruiz I think he's going to benefit going down to AAA Rochester I, I think him on the Red Wings makes a lot of sense we're going to call up Trace Barrera um now up to the major squad um because we had him and um Riley Adams and Adams is rated very poorly in this game only at 61 overall it's kind of ridiculous because he's better than Trace I think but we're going to be starting uh, Trace Barrera now as a starting catcher just because again I want to see Kiber Ruiz get some work down in AAA I think it could very much benefit him as we're going to be taking on the Chicago Cubs in today's episode I mean, the Cubs aren't very good either. We're going to be playing here at Wrigley. The Nats are 47 and 69. The Cubs are still like decent. They're 56 and 58. But again, talking about the pitching rotation, I mean, we're just waiting for Corbin to get off the contract. And obviously, Archer and Thompson are not two long-term stays on this pitching staff. Likely, eventually, that will get taken over by Kay Cavalli, Jackson Rutledge, and Edward Cabrera if everything does go well, pairing alongside Gray and Strasburg. I mean, that's the hope that that's our starting five in maybe not next year, but the year after. I think in two years should be really be our target date on when we're actually trying to contend. And if you look at our starting lineup, this is what it is right now. It's not very good. It's Lane Thomas, Luis Garcia, Juan Soto, Framo Reyes, Josh Bell's back, and Drupal Cabrera I kept because he had no trade value, Stevenson, Adrian Aza, and Trace Barrera. It's not very good. You know, it's not good when they're highlighting Andrew Stevenson because, oh, he's batting 211 in the last month. And that's supposed to be a good thing. Again, Washington Nationals baseball, you're along for the ride. So Luis Garcia is going to pick up a hit and he's really been a bright spot for me personally playing. Um, but like in the sim, he does terribly. That's like 220. But when I play with Luis Garcia, I think he does pretty damn well. Soto's going to fly out right there. Here comes Framo Reyes. He'll pull a cutter. I mean, he's way off on the PCI. The ball will be caught in left field. But Fran Ram just showing you some of the power he's got. And he's got more power, honestly, than Nelson Cruz does at this point in Cruz's career. Obviously, Nelson Cruz going to be playing his ball in Los Angeles before potentially his last season in the bigs. Chris Archer's pitching tonight, by the way. So... Expect a lot of runs, but uh, <laughs> the Cubs are going to get a base knocked to lead off the game with Nico Honer. Now, Jonathan VR is just going to tap one in front of the dish. Barrea can't get there in time, so VR is going to be on it with a hit. Runners on first and second, no outs. Nick Majidal up. That's a ground ball. Adrian Aza over to Garcia. Garcia to Bell in the Nets. Turn two. So I said it in the game that we played the Phillies. We're going to be a fun team to watch, I hope. Like with a lot of these young guys, as Chris Archer is going to go out and strike out Patrick Wisdom to get out of the jam right there. We'll take it. On to the top of the second, Josh Bell's got a C potential, which really hurts. Like, I don't think he had that to start the franchise, but now apparently he does after the injury. So that really sucks because I do like Josh Bell as he draws the walk. And then as Drupal Cabrera draws a walk as well, because I want Bell to be a long term, like, first baseman for the squad. I think he can be a guy who can really stay here and, you know, be protection behind Soto in the lineup. But if he's got C potential, I hate to do it, but I might have to trade the leader of the book club in the offseason. Adrian Naza, again, shouldn't really be up here right now, but he'll ground straight into a double play. We probably should be playing Isan Diaz instead, but it'll be a double play turn for the Cubs getting out of the top of the second. Ian Happel lead it off now in the bottom of the second, and the switch hitter is going to hit one into right field. Pass Luis Garcia, who decides it's really just not worth it to die for the baseball right now. So leadoff runner on for the Cubs. Harold Ramirez now up on the 1-1 count. He'll hit one high in the air in the left field, but going back on it will be Lane Thomas. Thomas is there, one down in the inning. Now up to the plate will be Wilson Contreras, batting only 201 this year, but Contreras now hits one on the right field line. That ball's going to roll for a while. It's just going to die out there. Runner's going to score easy. It's just a matter of what base Contreras will be on. He's going to three. Why did we throw it? Okay, I didn't think he was actually going to go three, so I threw, I threw a second. And Josh Bell's just standing there like, why are you throwing the ball to me? Contreras is on with his fourth triple of the year. It's a 1-0 lead for the Cubs. That ball will be grounded to short to Adrian Naza, but Jan Gomes will drive in a run. By the way, Jan Gomes playing first for the Cubs? Okay, so it's 2 nothing for Chicago. Simba comes up now in the 2-2 count, hitting one to his opposing shortstop in Adrian Naza. Adrian Naza will get us out the inning, but still the Cubs have taken a 2 nothing lead. As the Nationals will now hit in the top of the third, two gone in the inning for Luis Garcia, elevating that low fastball off of Drew Smiley. That ball's going to keep going, and oh my goodness, all the way to the track. Luis Garcia is on with a two-out double right there. Good piece of hitting, making way for one. So that's going to be so important for Luis Garcia, just continuing innings. 2-1 Soto, because a 
stuff like this. Soto basically goes golfing, pulls that low fastball into right field, and the Nationals are on the board here at Wrigley Field. It is now 1-2, and now Fran Mill Reyes will get a shot off of a lefty. It'll be a 1-1 count for Fran Ram, and oh my! Perfect, perfect, dead center, no doubt about it. Did you see Nelson Cruz do this with our team? I mean, he did an opening day, but my goodness, Fan Mill Reyes, no doubt about it. See you later. It's his 23rd home run of the season, 452 feet in the deep center field. Davey Martinez seems kind of happy. I mean, he's not going to get fired, don't worry, but my goodness, Fran Ram into center field. It's 3 to 2 for the Nats. Now, Josh Bell is going to get popped out on the cutter here. It's just way too late. Maybe that ball will go foul or out of play. No, never mind. Okay, Jan Gomes showing off the catcher skills, I guess. But not before Fran Mo Reyes puts the Nationals up by one. We go to the bottom of the third inning here. Jonathan VR hitting for Chicago. Josh Bell, though, is going to stab that one over at first base. It'll be the second out of the inning as the DH in Nick Madrigal comes up on the 2-1 count. Madrigal hits one right to second base. Easy play for Luis Garcia. And the Nationals are out of the bottom of the third, up by one here against the Cubs. We'll go straight to the bottom of the fourth. Nothing happening in the top of the fourth as Patrick Wisdom going to line one in the right field. Juan Soto cannot get there in time, so Wisdom will be on with a lead off single. Now Ian Happ comes up on the 2-2 count. Archer deals. Swag and a miss. Circle change away by Chris Archer. is going to set him down. One down in the inning. And now Harold Ramirez comes up on the 3-1 count. He'll line one into center field, but there is Andrew Stevenson. Andy Steve going to make the play. Two gone now in the inning for Wilson Contreras on the 2-2. Contreras on the ground. Charging is Adrian Naza. He's got time put him away we now move to the top of the fifth inning up to the plate will be trace barrera on the one two count barrera gonna hit one right to first base but it's stabbed at first by again the former national and jan combs one down in the inning for the top of the order lane thomas comes up on the one one count thomas puts a ride into the hanging curveball deep left field gone lane thomas our new leadoff hitter goes yard oh my goodness I mean, I wasn't expecting that, but it's Thomas's 10th home run of the season. And by trading Victor Robles, it gets Lane Thomas in the lineup every single night because before he was split in time with Andrew Stevenson. Now it's Thomas and Andy Steven in the lineup all the time. And Lane Thomas puts the Nationals up 4 to 2 as Luis Garcia now comes up here with one out. He'll fly one in the air in the right field. That ball will be caught, though, by Harold Ramirez. Two down for Juan Soto. On the 3 1 count, one will draw the walk, making way again for Fran Mil Reyes, who just did a home run. Again, he bats like two. 21, but still, Fran Ram's got pop. And on the 1 1 count, he'll put one right on the ground to short. There is Andrelton Simmons as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning with the Nationals up by two, thanks to the Lane Thomas home run. Jan Gomes going to come up here first up on the bottom in the fifth. And Lane Thomas just can't get to that ball. He'll dive to no avail. And Jan Gomes will be on second base. Easy Stevenson backing up Thomas. But again, Jan Gomes on it with a leadoff double to kick off the bottom of the fifth inning. Andrelton Simmons now comes up in the 2 2. Never known for his hitting, but that's a swinging butt and we've got a very slow okay we got a very slow as dribble cabrera there at third base but he'll make the play one down in the inning gomes moves over to third for nico honer honer in the right field he'll shoot one through and he'll be on it with a one out single so the cubs do draw closer to this nationals lead it is now four to three archer staying in the game for jonathan vr on the one two count vr right on the ground garcia over to adrian naza adrian naza over to bell and the nats will turn two we move to the top of the sixth inning the cubs though do draw within one is daniel Norris will now come out to pitch for the Cubs. Another left-handed pitcher for Chicago. ERA 4.57 so far this year, over 49 games pitched. A dribble Cabrera comes up first on the 2-1 count, and Cabrera is going to take that fastball opposite field, and that guy continues to get hits. And Cabrera with his 13 speed is going to chug a line, get out of second base, and oh my goodness, he's on with a double. Estrella Cabrera is on with one out in the inning. Here comes Adrian Naza on the 1-2. He's just going to get beaned. So with two outs in the inning, Tres Barrera gets a shot, or Trace Barrera on the 1-1, one, one, Trace up the middle. That ball, though, is going to be fielded by the shortstop and Angleton Simmons. The Nats get nothing in the top of the sixth inning. As we go to the bottom of the sixth, Chris Archer is still pitching for the Nats, but Nick Madrigal going to hit a fastball into left field. It will get down before Lane Thomas can get to it. It's a one-out single. Patrick Wisdom now up with the runner on, but that ball's hit sharply on the ground. Bell over to Adrian Naza. Adrian Naza back to Bell. And the Nats turn yet another double play. Two down in the inning for Ian Happ. High fastball gets put into center field. It's a high fly ball, but Andrew Stevenson will track it down, and Chris Archer goes six innings, only allowing three runs, likely the end of his day, but a pretty good outing for Chris Archer, who's just signed in the Nats just two weeks ago. Juan Soto going to hit one right in between the legs of the pitcher right there, but 
Of course, the shift is there, so the Nats will go down in order in the top of the seventh. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Out comes Andres Munoz. Now, I kind of get why the Mariners want to trade him. ERA 5.55 isn't great, but we can deal with stuff like that. Again, he's a project player. So Munoz is going to get a fly out right there on the fastball away. He throws 102 on that fastball. So pretty nice stuff out of the flamethrower we used to call him with the Padres franchise. One gun now for Wilson Contreras, and Contreras hits the slider high in the air. Deep center field. It will be caught by Andrew Stevenson and Munoz does keep him in the park. He keeps him in the park. So two down now for Jan Gomes and Gomes swinging and miss on the slider. That does it for the bottom of the seventh inning. We move to the top of the eighth. Hitting now for the Nets will be Fran Mill Reyes. And on the 3-1, Fran Ram will draw the walk. The Cubs pitching around him, of course, because of the moon shot he hit earlier. By the way, 51,000 in attendance for this game and 51,000 people are watching Josh Bell go yard. Josh Bell's a reader, and he just read your picture as the Nationals now go up by a three. See you later, Josh Bell. His 12th home run of the season. Of course, the season has been really just barred with injuries for Bell, but still 378 feet in the left field. Oppo Taco for the reader. And the leader of Josh Bell's book club is going to put us up by a three as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And out comes Alex Reyes, the newest national. Of course, the former Cardinal with an ERA of 4.09 so far in the season. He'll see Angelton Simmons first and swing and a miss. Two seam fastball up and in on the hands by Reyes. One gone in the inning for Nico Honer. On the 1 1 count, Honer going to hit the slider right back to the hill. There is Reyes. Easy play over to Josh Bell. Two gone in the inning for the two hole spot. It's the center fielder in Jonathan VR. VR actually gets a hit, so Nick Madrigal instead is just going to strike out on the 85 mile an hour slider. Yeah, Alex Reyes is dealing. We go to the top of the ninth. Luis Garcia is up here with two outs in the inning. And this is, again, what I'm talking about with Garcia. He always gets hits, and he always finds a way to get Juan Soto up in the box. So he extends the inning for Soto. By the way, Michael Givens, the former Oriole pitching for the Cubs. And there we go. Juan Soto, perfect, perfect on the fastball up into center field. By the way, I stopped using guest pitch, and I'm hitting a lot better. So shout out to you, whoever in the comment section suggested I do so. I'm going to find your name. I'll shout you out by the end of the video. But Framo Reyes is going to draw the walk right there. So loading him up for Josh Bell. Here comes the reader. 3-1 count. Michael Givens deals. That was just a little bit under the low fastball. It's going to be caught in left field by Ian Happ. So we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. And by the way, whoever suggested uh, the no guest pitch, it's Richard uh, Klein Sasser. I'm sorry, Richard, if I butchered your name. I tried not to. But anyways, on to the bottom of the ninth inning, Kyle Finnegan with his ERA of 1.75 comes in looking for the save. He strikes out Patrick Wisdom right there on the slider away. In comes Ian Happ on the 2-1 count. Oh, fastball right down the middle. And Ian Happ does what he's supposed to do with that baseball. Yeah, he takes that thing a damn mile. The Cubs now only down by two. Ian Happ's 19th home of the season goes 441 yards. The Cubs bullpen hyped, but still, they only got two more outs to play with, and there will be one of those outs. Josh Bell catches the pop out. Two gone in the inning. The last hope for Chicago is Wilson Contreras. He had a triple earlier in this game, and Contreras is going to get yet another extra base knock. He hits that one over the head of Juan Soto, and now the Cubs are going to bring the tying run to the plate in the form of the former Washington National League World Series with us in Jan Gomes on the one two count Gomes says a strike three on the slider and Kyle Finnegan continues his elite all-star worthy I mean he wasn't all-star his elite level run this year as the Nationals closer he's only a 60 what six overall D potential that doesn't matter Finnegan continues to get saves the Nationals beat the Chicago Cubs by a score of six to four they win this one winning their 40th game of the season so they are 48 and 69 as for the Cubs they're 56 and 59 but again the Nationals are not trying to contend we're just trying to have fun right now and honestly we probably have two more episodes left in this regular season before we get to the offseason and before we get a a little bit more serious like I don't think next year is going to be this year the season where we're like oh okay we better win the division but I I'm thinking next year we can start trying to contend and then the year after that's probably our playoff year so just be able to look out folks a lot of stuff coming here by the way on the channel LB22 the show I'm um, trying to get some Diamond Dynasty up not tomorrow not today probably tomorrow we'll get a pack opening and the day after we'll probably get some gameplay we've got rid of the show coming it's already been up earlier today and then I doubt Blue Jays today probably tomorrow We'll get more of the March to October as well. So, folks, thank you all for watching episode number six of the Washington Nationals franchise mode here on LMB22. The show, if you are enjoying the series, make sure that like button down below for more. Also, make sure to leave a like or do that, but also make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Give us a thank you all for watching and Mamba forever.